Okay, when we blow into pipes, we create a standing wave also. So we can get sound out of a pipe. You've heard that with a flute, trombone, you know, your little plastic recorder when you were a little kid, all of those kind of things. And we have two kinds of pipes. We have pipes that are open at one end and pipes that are open at both ends. This would be like a pan pipe. So when you blow down into the top and the sound, or when you blow into like your root beer bottle and you can get it to make noise. You blow in on this side here, on the right side here, you're blowing in. And then when you blow in, you're creating a compression. So we have a compression here, and a compression is similar to an antinode, because a compression is where you have your maximum pressure. And remember, the wave travels down, and it's a compression, 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 compression. And then when waves bounce off of a fixed end, remember we looked at this, and it reflects inverted. So it's coming down as a compression, 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 and then it flips over and becomes a rarefaction, rarefaction, rarefaction. And at this point right here, at the end of the pipe, you have a compression meeting a rarefaction, and so they cancel each other out, so you end up with a node down at the end. So if I were standing right here at the end of the pipe, I would find that I wouldn't be able to hear anything at all. There would be absolutely nothing going on. So we have we go from an antinode to a node and then it comes out as a compression and so basically the air in the pipe up here is just vibrating back and forth like this and so that would be our fundamental wavelength and notice that this is only one-fourth of a wave I know it's kind of hard to see that it's one-fourth of a wave let's pull up a wave so you can see that okay here's an actual whole wave so in our fundamental wavelength, we've gone here from the end, the node, to the antinode. So that's as much of the wave as we have right here in our fundamental wavelength. Okay, And so if you look at it, if you look at the rest of the wave, we have... another coming down and another okay we have to get all the way back up here before we have a whole wavelength and you and so you should see that you know this is half the wave and so this is one quarter of the wave so the length of our pipe is only one fourth of a wavelength so it's different from the strings where the length of the pipe was half, the length of the pipe is one fourth of the wavelength. So the wavelength itself for our fundamental is four times the length of the pipe. So it's not twice the length of the pipe, it's four times the length of the pipe. But here's the kind of tricky thing, is if I did the second harmonic, the second harmonic would basically be like d twice as, it'd be twice as much of the wave so the second harmonic would only be to here on this second pipe but if it's a node can I hear anything I can't so I'm not gonna hear the second harmonic there's no noise in order for there to be noise there needs to be a compression coming out that pipe and there's no there's no noise at a node a node is nothing a node is where everything's been canceled out so that's not gonna work so the second harmonic and the fourth harmonic, see here would be the fourth harmonic. Okay, the fourth harmonic, that's not going to work either because, again, we're at a node. So with pipes closed at one end, you're only going to get your odd harmonics. Those are the only harmonics you're going to get. So you're going to get the first, the third, the fifth because that's as much of the pipe. But the relationships are the same. The relationships that we found with the strings are exactly the same as the relationships we have with the pipes. And that is 
that the nth harmonic, the, the frequency of the nth harmonic is still n times whatever harmonic it is times our fundamental. So we're still going to go through very similar processes that we did with strings to get our our fundamental fre our harmonic frequencies. And when our pipe is open at both ends, this is like reflecting off of a non-fixed barrier. So when when the wave bounced off a non non-fixed barrier, if it came down as a compression, it went back as a compression. Remember when it came down, it went down and it came up, but then when it bounced back, it still was going the same direction. So at the end, you're going to have compressions. You're going to have antinodes at the end. So you're going to blow in one end, and then you're, the sound can actually go out the other end because the other end's open. Now it's not as obvious to see that this is half of a wavelength, but if we look at our wave itself, here's our wave itself. We're going from the crest, from the crest, down through to the trough, the crest to the trough. Because rarefactions are also areas where it's at its maximum displacement. So you have compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. And your rarefactions are also your maximum pressure. It's just a negative pressure instead of a positive pressure. And that is half of the wave because the rest of the wave is here. There's the other half of the wave would be there or there would be the other half of the wave. And when you go crest to crest, that's a whole wavelength. So if you're only going crest to trough, you have half of a wavelength. So this is very much like a string where our wavelength is two times the length of the pipe, where we have half of the wave in the pipe, so the actual wavelength itself is twice the length of the pipe. So our equations are the same. We still have that the nth harmonic is n times our fundamental. We still have the velocity equals wavelength times frequency. And then we do have, if it's closed at one end, It's closed at one end, the wavelength is four times the length of the pipe. If it's open at one end, then our wavelength is two times the length of the pipe. So this one's like a string. When it's open at both ends, sorry about that, open at both ends, so when it's open at both ends, that's very much like the string. But when it's closed at one end, then we have four times the length of the pipe. So here we have a pipe that's 22 centimeters long. Okay, let's, let's convert that to meters. So that's 0.22 meters. Okay, so we know that the length of the pipe is 0.22 meters. And it's closed at one end. You kind of want to pay attention. Is it open at both ends or closed at one end? You really have to look for those words when you're solving the problems. And so we know that our wavelength is, since it's closed at one end, is four times that. So our wavelength itself is 0.88 meters. So this is the wavelength for our fundamental. And then we go velocity equals wavelength times frequency. And so the velocity, we're going to use the speed of sound in air because now the, this, this, what is vibrating itself is the air in the pipe. And so that's what, we're, what the sound is traveling through. It's traveling through the air. When, when it was on the string, 
the wave was traveling through the string. So we have 343 meters per second is equal to our wavelength, 0.88 times our frequency, and we find out that our frequency is 390 hertz. So that would be if it was closed at one end. Now if we took all of this, okay, so this is what the frequency was when it was closed at one end. But now let's see what the fundamental frequency of the pipe would be if it was open at both ends and see how they compare. So since it's open at both ends, we know that the wavelength is twice the length of the pipe because when it's open at both ends, only half the wavelength is in the pipe. So then our wavelength is now equal to 2 times 0.22. So our wavelength is 0.44 meters. Putting that into our equation, 343 is equal to our wavelength times our frequency. And solving for our frequency, we get that our frequency is 780 hertz. Now look at open at both ends compared to open at one end. If you take 390 and you multiply it by 2, guess what you get? 780 hertz. So really this frequency is just twice as high. This is almost like a harmonic. It's not because it's not the same pipe. Harmonics are within the same pipe, but we also see that when our wave, when our pipe is open at both ends, that we have a higher frequency. So when the pipe is open at both ends, when it's open at both ends, your frequency is twice as high. because you have a shorter wave. And remember, the shorter your wave, the smaller your wavelength, the larger your frequency. The longer your wavelength, the lower your frequency. In a pipe closed at one end, you have longer, free, you have longer wavelengths than you do if it's shorter at, if it's open at both ends. So there you go. Good luck.